Hello, good day, and welcome to Go on the Run. And so today, we're going to be getting into part five of services. And specifically, we're going to be looking at a node port. Now, I spoke about the four service types in the previous video. Today, we're focusing on node port. So let's say this is my Kubernetes cluster. I always start with this. And we know that we're going to have some nodes in my cluster. And they have, of course, the net interface that allow them to talk to each other. And because we're talking about Kubernetes, we care about pods. And so we have pods running. And of course, we want a service. So let's say we have service A that is running on port 80. Um, so service A is going to be responsible for load balancing between those two pods. Now we might have a service B. And remember, each service have their own IP address. And because they have their own IP address, they can have any port number with, that's within that you know, allowable range, which means service B could have the same port 80 open because of a different IP address. But because I don't want to confuse you, I'm just showing a different port number of 840. But keep in mind that each service have their own IP address. Therefore, the port numbers can be the same because they're separated by IP address. Just like each node on your computer have its own IP address. Therefore, you can still have the same port number on every host or node because they're different IP addresses. Okay. All right. And so similarly, we can have service B being responsible for a different set of pods, of course. And we know that all the services can communicate with each other, right? They have their own service network. Now, we cover all that in the previous video. Now, when we talk about the load balancer type, what we're talking about is the load balancer, which is outside of your Kubernetes cluster. And now it's able to send traffic to your Kubernetes cluster. We talk a little bit about that, that in order to get traffic to your Kubernetes cluster, you have to implement, you have to use one of the other um, service type like a node port or the load balancer um, service type that will then expose um, some ports on the nodes so that all your load balancer can hit it. Um, but we're just going to note that all a load balancer could be used to forward traffic to your send traffic to your services. We're not going to really look at the details of that right now. For us, we want to, like I said, this video is about node ports. So let's take away some of these lines because we have to draw even more lines and it can get pretty confusing. So for service B, I'm going to say for now, let's ignore service B and just keep in mind that how, yep, you know that how it has to control those pods. So what is a node port then? If we say that service A is doesn't use, the type is not a cluster IP, which is a default, but rather a node port, what we're saying is that we want a port on every one of our nodes. The key thing here is what I just said. Every single node in our cluster will have the same port. And that's why you see port 2010 is on all three of my nodes. This does not matter if, let's say, port um, node 3 does not have a pod for service A. It doesn't matter. Remember, a pod could end up there anyway. So who cares, right? So plus, you want to be able to make it so that oh, from any node within the cluster, anybody who's it in that port 2010 would be able to get to service A. That's what node port type surface does for you, is it configures a port on every node to be able to forward traffic back to that service. The advantage of this is, and this is different than when we do a proxy. When we did a proxy of our pod, we're like selecting one pod and say, bind that IP address and make it available on our computer so we can use it. Or we're saying if we do a proxy to a deployment, it picks one of the pod in the deployment. And same thing when you do a proxy to a service, it just pick one of the pods. We demonstrated this like two videos ago and you keep sending traffic data and it's still just that one pod. And that's just before we introduce service to show why we need service. And so with a service, we still get the load balance across our pods. And so even when we use node port on any one of our nodes, if we hit port 2010, it's going to go to the service and we're going to get the, still get the benefit that the service provides, which is the load balancing. It's not picking one pod in that service. It's still pointing to the service. And therefore, we get the load balancing benefit. Let's say it's service B instead that we're talking about. And this time we want to do a node port for service B. Well, 
it's going to be yet a different port that must be open on all of our nodes. Notice because you're opening ports on the nodes, they can't overlap, right? So on any node, you can have multiple ports, but they have to be different numbers. So, and now I can say that port 1040 routes traffic to service B. Now it took off the lines for the other one, but I left the port there. So in the back of your head, imagine that oh, we still had the lines for service A. It means that oh, if someone can hit these nodes in your cluster, any one of them, they can get to service A or B by hitting the appropriate port. So 2010, take them to service A and all the pods behind that or load balances to the pods behind that. And if they hit port 1040 on any one of these nodes, it load balances to the pods behind that. And again, the pods can move around. We showed this already with services. You can remove and create pods and all that is abstract, abstracted away because you're using the service IP instead, right? Or the service name. Okay, so let's now jump to the command line and play around with this and see how this works. So here I am at my command line and I'm ready to kick off my watch command. So I want to show you that. And so I kind of zoomed this out a little bit, make the font a little bit smaller so everything can be shown. And you can see there's an internal IP address for each one of my nodes. That's the IP address that Kubernetes assigned it from within the cluster. The external IP addresses, if I was using real machines like or VMs or actual bare metal, they will have an external IP address that I can access on my network. But remember, we're using Docker, and I'll get back to that later because that adds a little bit of complication to some of the things you might want to do. But that's remember, this is just for testing. So that's why I don't have like an external IP address. But never mind all that. And so the only service I have now running is this Kubernetes service, and we're not interested in that. That's the API servers. So we don't care about that. So let's get started here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy everything that we did in um, three to four, part three to part four. And so then I'm going to service underscore part dash part four. OK, clean up. And so what I want to do is I told you the easiest way to have everything created is to just say cube apply minus F and dot. And that creates our service and our deployment. So great. That's up and that's running. All right. We can start up our Visual Studio code since we're here or we might as well. Why not? And we can go back here. OK, so that is all good. Now, like I said, what we really want to be able to do is create a node service. So let me go to this window here. I'm going to zoom in so we can kind of see what's going on. If we say Q, okay, before I do that, let me get the service name. So the service name is this. So I copy that. And let me go back here. And so if I do kubectl describe, and I say to describe this service, you'll see that it says the type is cluster IP. We already discussed this already, okay? So I just wanted to show you that. So I'm going to zoom back out. And so watch what happens when I go and I go to service and I'm going to change the type like that, no port. All right, that's fine. And then just let's apply our change. So if I rerun this again and just rerun it, you'll see the only thing that's changed was the service, which makes sense. And so you'll see that there was some thing that happened here um, and I don't know if you were paying attention but notice now that oh, the service has another port attached to it which is port 31031. Kubernetes when it's doing node port it uses port numbers between 30,000 and 32,767. So that was the port that was added. Okay so okay and just in case you um, didn't notice that before let me just take this out. I'm going to change this, comment out. I'm going to go back here and look what happens to my service on the port. Remember this sort of um, way of mapping thing is saying that the service port points to this thing. Okay so if I rerun this again you'll see that number is going to go away. Bam, it's gone. Because if it's internal, we can just access it. And so let's go back here and put it back. Um, let me do this and run this, and you'll see that, yep, the port shows back up. So now this is telling me that port 30,750 is on every single node. Well, 
What are the nodes? Well, these are the nodes for our cluster. We have the server 0, agent 0, agent 1, agent 2. What are their IP address? I don't want the internal IP address. I won't really have an IP address for them. But what I can do is I can still go on that node using you know, Docker because they're actually Docker containers that are pretending to be nodes that K3D is using as node. So I can say Docker PS and I can do that grep for K3D. And if I were to bring this up a little bit and then go across here, we can see it all. We have a Docker container running for each one of these um, nodes. Let me clean that up and do it again. We have a Docker container running for each one of those nodes. So what I can do is I can just pick one of those container ID and I'll enter into it. Um, so this is the, not the service load balancer one. Um, I want to use one of the agent or server because those are the nodes that we are using here. So it's one of those. So I'll use agents, the server one. This is default server. And I'll do Docker, Docker, uh, exec, because that's how we enter a container, minus IT for interactive. The container I want to enter, and then the command I want to run. So bash is a shell, but it's not available in that container that's used, being used by K3D. So I'm going to use slash bin slash sh because most of the next machine have, um, all of the next um, machines will have a shell and it's like bad, the basic shell. So once I'm in this now, um, we tried before that our curl doesn't work. So w get minus out. And what I want to do if I do w get minus out, by default, w get writes to a file, but I want it to write the standard out. So minus o and then dash for standard out. So if I do w get minus capital O dash for out, and now, if I want to hit my service, remember port 3750 is open look on all hosts. So I should be able to do this 3750, and I should be able to hit that service. And if I do sleep 0.5 or less 0.2, make it a little bit fast, and I do done, and then I go to the beginning and say, wow, true, do, and then I run this. We should see that how it's load balancing and all i'm doing is hitting the same port port 3750 but that's forwarding to the service and so i can do this on any host it doesn't matter if there's a pod running there or not as a matter of fact if we look we can see that our pod is running on server zero so that doesn't prove my point and then um on node agent two so let's go to a totally different one where it's not running so i exit and I'm going to clean up and I'm going to do Docker and I'm going to do grep K3D and let's go to, it's not running on agent zero. So let's go to agent zero. This is agent zero. And I do Docker EXEC, let's clean up, minus IT agent zero, let's say. And I want to run slash bin slash SH. I'm in there and then now let's do while true do w get minus o standard out local post 3750 and then i do done oh sleep sleep point two for example and notice it works again and it's being load balancing as you can see the host name okay so that's great so this now says oh the port is available on that node great but I, can i still access it from my mac like how do I access this on my Mac? Can I say while true and then do um, do w get for example? No, I like using HTTP IE, so I'm use HTTP. And can I do localhost? Same thing, localhost that thirty um, seven fifty. Can I do that? Sleep uh, point two and then done. Would that work? And so it's not reachable. The port is not on my Mac. And this is why I refer to that this makes it a little bit complicated. But I still would like to make this truly external. At this point, yes, if these nodes were actually on my network as separate computers or VM, it would totally work. But we're running these nodes from within Docker. So can I still have access and make it truly external where my Mac can use it. In the next video, I'll show you how we can access our service from your machine, whether it's a Mac, Linux, or Windows, assuming that you're running K3D. Again, I keep saying this, there's no reason why you shouldn't be using it because you would not be able to do all the stuff we're doing 
right now if you're still on mini cube and so that should have been clear quite a number of videos back so please let me know if you have questions and if you have made it here and you have not subscribed yet please consider subscribing for those who have already subscribed thank you very much i really want to thank you for coming back and your patience and support see you in the next video take care stay safe